All right, guys, it is Spirit Week. It's going to be a lot of fun. And today's assignment is going to be building, um, and yours, of course, might be much larger, a blanket fort. And what I'm doing is I am using a stuffed animal um, to be in my little blanket fort. And I'm substituting a great big blanket uh, for my blanket fort. And I'm just using like a dish towel, which works out great. Now for the blanket fort, um, what we learned in the YouTube video was just to go again with the flow. And we want to draw the lines that we see. I'm going to follow the artist and his recommendation because drawing folds in fabric and drawing fabric so it can sometimes seem like that, you know, it's kind of tough, but really, um, if you just go with the marks that you see and you just put them in there and just be confident, don't worry about mistakes, draw large, fill up your page and go from there, I think you're going to be okay. And just try something new. Of course, we've been drawing in 3D for a little while, so this is just a natural extension and class of what we've already been doing. What's really interesting is that while I'm drawing, I'm watching myself digitally draw digitally. <laughs> Instead of looking at the subject matter, um, we have become so digital that I'm actually looking at a movie being made of me drawing instead of looking at the actual image that I'm drawing. Isn't that interesting with the digital world that is surrounding us? I think that's pretty awesome. So I want to draw so large, um, again, you want to just go off the page. You don't want to worry about getting everything perfect. You want to go with the directional intentions and purposes of our featured artist in the YouTube video today and just go with the outlines. Once you've done that, then I really like the way he set up a little value scale at the top. You can do this if you want to or not. And of course you have like the lighter to the darker um, areas will let the right be the lighter and it gets a little darker. And then of course another layer on top of that to get a little bit darker. And then the next would be another layer on top of a layer. So that you would have a progression of where you're going to see the shadows and where you're going to see the lighter areas. So to me that makes a lot of sense and I think I'll try that. Now, I remember, or I believe you guys can probably remember, um, our last project was the screen by Edvard Munch, and we were instructed to hold um, your paintbrush or pencils between your forefinger and your thumb and move with the motion. Um, I believe this would be another great opportunity to um, do that very same thing. And of course, make sure that you stay connected with your picture and with your blanket fort. Now you know that um, you can, and I hope you do, send your selfie of the blanket fort that you made to Miss April Garrett. That's A-G-A-R-R-E-T-T -T at LexRich5.org for this particular lesson. Now, a blanket is pretty soft or any type of fabric that you're using if you um, decided to use like a smaller wash rag like me um, or dish towel or bath towel. I mean, that's fine. That's kind of the same thing. Now, the one advantage in using like a lighter uh, color blanket that's a solid color is that you'll be able to see the folds in the blanket a lot easier and you won't have like fabric decorations getting in the way of you being able to see the actual 
fold areas in the textures and the details that are there. And again, looking at where the light is and where the shadows are and where the real dark shadows are hanging out and where the light of lighter shadows are make a really big difference in how we begin to define um, the picture in terms of its visual content. Now drawing in fabric folds are almost like being lost in space in a lot of the areas. Um, it's just a lot of shapes and I love the word nebulous because it's almost like being in outer space. You really don't know where you are yet until you land where the destination is that you're going and then all of the nebulous areas begin to make sense and they'll take shape. But right now, while you're working on the picture, it can seem to be as though you might be lost, kind of in space, and that's okay. Some of the blanket areas that you're drawing might be a little curvaceous, which means that they do have an inner fold that curls under. It's kind of great uh, catching those areas as you're looking and observing, and that's the power of this picture is that you're doing a lot of observing. You're looking at the picture that you took, which first of all is kind of cool because the picture that you took and then now you're translating it, artistically speaking, through the art of drawing and the art of shading. So it will take on a whole diff a different entity of an outward expression of your blanket fort. So it'll be kind of neat to see as you enter in on the turn-in slide the actual photo that you used and then what your translated drawing uh, will be in accordance with it. So it should be fun since it's all your um, original work. So isn't that a cool thing? Of course, in the unicorn stuffed animal, the um, texture here will change just a little bit then from the blanket and it will separate the value in the texture as opposed to the blanket folds style or effects that you're using um, in the blanket as opposed to what the blanket fort is covering, whether that's you or whether that's um, a stuffed animal. You know, you do the choosing. All right, well, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want this video to get too long and drawn out. I know you already know um, what you're going to do with yours, but I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm forward to seeing your blanket fort drawing completed and uploaded to Google Classroom uh, assignment turn in today for Spirit Week along with the selfie. Uh, photograph that you took. Now remember, if you took this on your phone, then you'll need to email this to your student email so that you can save it on your drive. If you use your Chromebook to take the picture, then that will already be on your drive. So your selfie and your Chromebook shot might be a little bit different. I've had to turn mine on the side because my camera is in a very odd direction. So you can manipulate things and turn them around and do what you need to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, have a good time.